the world needs to step up and address the issue of single-use plastic. In this historical panel, the Portuguese government pledges to play its part. The Minister for the Environment, João Pedro Matos Fernandes, is joined by activist and filmmaker Alexander Cousteau and philanthropist and president of the Mirpuri Foundation, Paulo Mirpuri, also Jeremy Wilkes from Euronews as the Minister announces a historic piece of legislation. So please welcome them all on stage right now. Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. We've had some inspiring messages this afternoon, and I hope we're going to have some more inspiring messages in this short panel that we have here. We've only got a few minutes. We're going to crack on. The Minister, João Pedro, you have an announcement to make to the crowd about what Portugal is doing to deal with plastics. Please tell us, what is your announcement? Well, yes. Well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, and I have to start to say that I'm thankful for plastics. Uh, there's plastics everywhere. It's really hard to make this conference without plastic. The problem is that plastic, it's not just on the microphones, on the, the credit cards. It's the plastic is everywhere. It's in the water that you drink. It's in ourselves. And that is the problem. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense to make disposable products with an indestructible material. And this is the real problem that we have about, about plastic. So we have to consume less, we have to shift technology, we have to shift behavior, we have to shift design. And what we assumed one week ago in the government at, that we will stop use in the public administration single-use plastic in every, uh, every department of the administration, direct or indirect, so that the public, the public companies that we, we all are going to stop use uh, single-use plastic. So the government will, at the end of this year, stop using single-use plastic? Yes, well, the public procurement, it, re it represents about 18% of the, 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 the common procurement in the country. Uh, in Europe, it's a little bit more, about 20%. And uh, I have no doubt that we have to be an example. So, uh, for you, things like dishes and cups and so, they are really forbidden from last uh, Saturday. And uh, when we make public tenders, after the 1st of January of next year, the single-use plastic will be no longer used in public What do you replace it with? Sorry? What is the replacement? The replacement, well, there are lots of things to do. We can replace it uh, when we are talking about bottles. We have to use bottles that, that we can reuse. When we are talking about bags, we have to use it in paper. When we're talking about dishes and cups, we have to use it, well, in natural materials. Uh, and the materials that we use to know them when we are at home. Alexandra, I'm going to come to you on this one. What's your reaction to that um, and that kind of decision? What do you think about it? How does it fit into the overall context of the kind of work that you do? Well, uh, congratulations. I think this is Thank truly you. an exciting development. And what we need to remember about the plastics issue in the oceans is that we need uh, multiple avenues for action. It's not just recycling. It's uh, not just new technology and new materials. It's also turning off the tap of single-use plastic and making sure that we transition to a different economy, a plastics economy. This is definitely an incredibly important part of that. But what I wanted to place this into a larger context of the oceans for a moment and mention that since the 60s, we've addressed degradation in our oceans with a conservation ethic, the idea that we have to preserve what we have before we lose it. And while that's been useful to us in many ways, we're noticing that we're losing the war. And I think now is a time to transition to a restoration agenda, where we look at our outcomes and our successes in terms of bringing back what we've lost. And obviously, we can't restore our oceans if they're gagging on plastics. So addressing plastic is a key component of that. And, um, and I think that this is Definitely a very exciting step it, in, the, in the, this start. kind of leadership is really important. Paolo, would you give us a reaction, what's happening in your businessman as well. Tell us about what's happening in the business world as well with, with this kind of decision making. Uh, yes, I think that uh, we need to look into the plastic problems from different perspectives. First of all, I would like to say that uh, single-use plastic can save lives. We use it on the medical 
for the medical, on the medical uh, and hospitals, uh, lots of single-use plastics, for example, on the syringes, uh, on tubes, on valves, yes. catheters, etc. So the plastic is not a bad thing. The problem is that the plastic that we use today is a problem because not only it lasts a lot in the nature, it can last for hundreds of years without degradation, um, so it accumulates and it has toxins attached to it. So we need definitely to replace the currently in use plastic by a substitute. At the foundation level we are working on it and there are many initiatives uh, worldwide uh, to replace the current plastic by other equivalent materials. But there are basically three levels of actions. First we need to increase the awareness of uh, the population um, about the problem of the plastic. And we have done lots of campaigns that uh, the governments are doing lots of campaigns, so I think that's a good thing. Um, the second thing, we need to close the tap uh, to stop putting plastic in the society. So we need to close the tap and that's where we need to replace it by another type of plastic. And the third level of action is to remove the plastic that is accumulating since the 50s from the nature and uh, try to uh, recycle part of it. So that's the three levels of action that I we think need to do. The first one about awareness, there's clearly been a change uh, in the last few years when it comes to that. Um, the second one I'm interested about replacing it. How do you evaluate how green the replacement is afterwards, how sustainable it is? Because uh, it may be the case there's more CO2 emitted by making a paper cup than there is by making a, a plastic uh, object, for example. How are you evaluating these things and being sure that you're actually doing something which is genuinely beneficial? Minister, do you have me? Yeah. Well, that's obviously that when we deal about materials, we are really uh, contributing for the CO2 problem. Uh, we, normally we talk about energy when we talk about emissions, but it's not completely true. About two-thirds of the problems that we have in the environment coming, come from the, the, the transformation of materials, so the producing of goods. That's why we need to uh, make a, a, a big effort to promote a circular economy. Uh, we definitely have to reduce the use of primate, of, primate, of raw materials because otherwise it's really the thing that will finish. When we talk about pollution uh, and the problems of pollution, I will say that in one year, in two years, with five million euros, I can solve that problem. When we talk about energy, uh, we have a lot of things to do, but uh, I think that we are in a good way, and Portugal is definitely in a good way. Last March, with 100% uh, of the electricity that we consume in Portugal, they all come from renewable energy. When we talk about materials, they really are going to end. They will end. So that's why we have to make this big effort and this big effort for everything. Even when we talk about 4.0 economy, we are using uh, lots of goods. And in Europe, we only have 9% of that raw materials for the, that product. That's why we need to shift from a circular economy. And definitely the single use plastic, it's the, the top, uh, the top uh, product of the, uh, of the linear economy. Was it an easy one. decision to take? Was what it, the initiatives we are taking, yes. With, with, well, yeah. with, we was, it, was it easy well, to make that, to, to, to say, yeah, we stop having this public procurement of single-use plastics? Was that easy for the government? Or did you have to fight that? Well, first of all, we have to, 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 to convince ourselves, because there are many people who think that it's impossible to do it. Of course, when we are talking about health products, that, that we have to have an exception. But uh, I have no doubt that the, the political commitment, it's, a, uh, it's full and it's really strong. Now we have to train all the administration to uh, try to show them that it's possible and there are other products that they, they can be used yes. and maybe they, they don't know. And of course, we are pushing those who, product, those who produce those products to do it in a different way because they have to design it from the beginning in a different way. Otherwise, they will be out of a very important market who represents, it. I've told you, 18% of the market of goods in Portugal. Alexandra, I'm interested in what you talked about, changing the mindset, moving to restoration. At the moment, we, we have cleanup efforts underway to try and deal with ocean plastics. You have the ocean cleanup going on in, in, in the Pacific at the moment. But tell me a little bit more about what you think can be done to kind of fix the oceans. What can we do? 
Well, there's a, I mean, that's, that's a long list. Yeah, you've got um, four minutes, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I think that um, getting the, the plastic out of the ocean that's there is critically important as much as we can. We'll never get it all. In fact, there's nanoplastics now that have been observed being eaten by plankton. So it's really from the very bottom of the food chain all the way up, it's pervasive. Um, the best way we can address that is to stop more plastic from going in and clean up as much as we can. But remember that just cleaning up plastic from the environment is like trying to stop climate change by sucking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. We have to go a lot further. Um, I think one of the most promising things that I've noticed is that people are talking about plastics more and more and more. And that, that terribly troubling um, prediction that, that by 2050 there would be more plastic than fish in the ocean I think has galvanized action around the world. I've seen people getting involved in ways that uh, they never did before. And but the, I, the oceans are um, filled with heat, they're filled with CO2. How do you deal with that? It's not just the plastic. No, it's not just the plastic. Um, and, and what we need to focus on for restoring our oceans is carbon, fish, and habitat. And so um, there are ways to uh, mitigate climate change by afforesting the ocean to absorb carbon dioxide and deacidify the water, which makes it easier for a lot of different marine organisms, including the plankton that produces oxygen that we breathe, to thrive. Uh, there's a lot that we can do through policy to, um, to stop overfishing and, and allow our fish populations to thrive again and, and to rebound. Um, and there's a lot of things that we can do to protect habitat that is essential for all sorts of different reasons. So I feel quite positive that the solutions but are that, there. How much traction do you get? You meet a lot of leaders, uh, important people. H how interested are they in following the kind of example that you're getting from Portugal here? You know, having, having spoken with ministers from different countries about restoring abundance in the oceans, it is a concept that garners tremendous enthusiasm. It is a shift a fundamental shift from the conservation ethic to a restoration agenda. It's something that I think people can get behind. It's something where you can see progress in a new direction. And I think it's something that gives me a lot of hope that we can um, have different measurement for success than we have in the past and find the technologies and the ideas that we need to bridge the ingenuity gap and get us to where we need to be. Paolo, what's the business world thinking about this? Because you, you are a businessman. And what, what does the business world think about banning plastics? Does it make business sense to do that as well? Uh, it does. Uh, in our group, we, want, we own two airlines. And uh, the airlines are one of the uh, largest producers and la largest consumers of single-use plastic. We have committed in our airlines to, to stop the use of single-use plastic by the end of 2019. This represents tons of plastics, uh, just for you to have an idea, each long haul flight, return flight, is around 500 kilograms of plastic that is spent, that used, much. that much, in one return long haul flight. It's everywhere, it's on the trays, it's, on the, uh, it's everywhere, on the food containers, etc. So, but the, one important thing that I would like to say here is that we, we mentioned plastic is not good for the environment, is not good for the planet, but we didn't spoke yet about one of the most important things, is that the plastic, what, everything that we have done to the nature is coming in, uh, in a big way back to us. The, it was uh, part of the investigations and research of the foundation that um, not only has, but the scientific community, that uh, the plastic is mixing with the, with the food uh, and comes to, our, to the food chain, not only through the fish, but uh, through the contact of the water with the plastic yes. bottles, and we ingest that. And uh, a lot of pathologies of the modern society, like diabetes, like uh, prostatic cancer, breast cancer, etc., they are strong evidence that is linked with some of the chemicals associated with the plastic. So, when we think that uh, about plastic, let's not think only about what it does to the animals, to the oceans, to the nature, but that let's also think that it's doing, um, it's very harmful for the human being in first instance. instance. So we, did the, we create a problem, it is up to us to solve it. Thank you very much. We're going to have to end it there. I have a round of applause for this, this great sense of enthusiasm that we're going to do something about plastic finally. Thank you, everybody. Time is up. Thank you. We'll have to go. Thank you.